Hi, my name is Kent Lee and I teach computer science at Luther College. Okay, so we've got several lessons that we've uh, taken care of already and now we're ready to move on to lesson seven where we're going to create a race car as part of our Frogger application. To get started on this, we're going to go up to uh, the spotlight search again and we're going to type in terminal. Um, if you're on a Windows machine, again, go to the uh, Git Bash script and, and uh, Git Bash shell and open up the Git Bash shell so that you can uh, type these commands with me. Um, so we're going to do CD and then CD into documents and then CD into, uh, into uh, programming and then we're going to uh, CD into Frogger from there. So um, and then we're going to check out that next lesson. So we're going to do a, a git checkout dash f and this is lesson seven that we're going to be working on. So we'll go ahead and switch to that branch. After doing that we should see frogger.py and that images directory. So we'll start up wing and we'll open up that frogger.py Wing is starting up there. There's the frogger.py already open for me um, from that programming folder. Here's the code that we've been working on and we've created a frog already. So we're going to go create a race car here next. So to do that, to begin with, we're going to have to create a, a race car class because race cars are going to be, uh, are going to be turtles as well. Um, before we get to that, we're going to come down here to the screen.register shape and we're going to add the race car shape uh, to this application. So register shape and it's from images and it's called race car um, dot gif. Okay, so that's where we're, uh, where we're getting the picture from. Um, but we need this uh, race car class. So I want you to go ahead and define a race car as well. The only difference in this case is that while the turtle is pointing right, the race car is pointing left. So we're going to go and rotate 180 degrees instead of 90 degrees. So you pause the video here and write your race car class, uh, which is exactly the same as the Frogger class and then start the video up again. Okay, so if you've written your race car class, this is what you should have. Class race car. I'm going to give it a capital C and a capital R. Typically with classes, we start them with a capital letter and we capitalize every other word within them. So this is class race car and you can see that it inherits from raw turtle with the same kind of spelling there. That makes it easy for us to recognize that race car is a class that we're going to be using. Okay, so we got a definite, we got self and canvas, and you know what? Everything is so much the same. I'm going to save myself some time and just command C and then paste it in down here, command V, control C and control V if you're on Windows. Okay, so one thing that's different is it's not the frogger, it's the race car dot gif. And I said that we had to turn left 180 degrees instead of 90. And this is also different here. We're not going to go to that uh, location. Um, in fact, we're going to allow ourselves to go to different locations. So we are going to add two extra parameters to this, which are going to be the X and the Y. So this is on the init. We're adding X and Y there so that we can do a self.go to and we'll go to that X and that Y in our init here. Okay. So that's our race car class and you'll want to make sure that yours looks just like mine probably a couple little differences that uh, that you need to fix up. So pause it here and fix that up. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and create a race car. So um, down in the code, it turns out that the order that we create these turtles affects the, uh, the order in terms of what's on top of each other. And a 
race car is going to be on top of a turtle if the turtle ever gets run over. So I want to create the race car before I create the frog, okay? So that the race cars are on top of turtles should they get run over. So um, I've got the frog uh, being created and uh, I'm sorry, the race car has to be created after the frog so that it's on top of it. That's what I meant to say. So the frog was created first. If I create the race car next, then the race car will be on top of the frog. Okay, so, so we'll go ahead down here and we'll create a, a race car. We'll call it car equals race car. Okay, and we got to specify the canvas. That has to be passed in just like when we created the other one. And I'm going to go 500 minus 50 for my two coordinates for where the car race car is being created. <clears throat> now, I'm going to create more than one car eventually, so I'm going to create a list of cars, and that list is going to be empty to begin with, and then I can do a cars.append and add that car that I just created. So append appends to the end of a list, and after I've called append on this empty list of cars, this car will be in that list, okay, added to that list. And that'll turn out to be important here in just a moment. Okay, so I've got a list of cars, and I've got the one on the screen. And if I run this at this point, I don't see the car because it's off the screen right now. It's at 500. Um, temporarily here, I could change this to something like 200 just so we could see that it's there. There it is, but it's not moving right now. We'd like this car to be moving across the screen, and that means that we need to animate it. And animation involves making frames. So we're going to make frames for our application here now so that we animate the car across the screen. Each frame is going to move the car just a little bit, and then if we go through the frames fast enough, it'll look like it's just moving like a car would move. So this is, this is called animation, and we have to make these frames. You probably have seen this kind of thing before if you've looked at some kind of a flip book. Um, we'll change that back to 500. And here's what we have to do to animate it then. So we're going to create another event handler here, and we'll call it animate. Okay. And animate won't take any parameters, but inside of this, we're going to do for car in cars. That's our list, okay? And we're going to tell the car to move forward. So we're going to say car dot forward. Remember, it is a it is a turtle. Car dot forward, and we're going to move it forward, say two units each time, okay? Now um, we have to register this event handler as well. Um, and uh, to do that, we are going to use, it's called, on the screen, it's called onTimer. So screen.onTimer, and we're going to call animate each time we want uh, it to be called. Now, that's after, look carefully here, that that screen.onTimer is after the animate function, straight down from it. But there's actually one more call to animate that we need to do. So we're going to do this each time animate is called. We have to say call it again after a bit of time. So it's screen.onTimer. This time, though, however, we're going to say call animate after one, sec after one uh, millisecond I, or micro millisecond, I believe it is, after one millisecond. Um, <clears throat> we also want to call update because without calling update, we won't see any changes made. So the update is kind of giving us our frames from our animation. Every time we call update, we're going to see a new frame. Okay. So now when I go and run this, if I've done everything correctly, there's my car moving across the screen and it sure looks like it's moving nice and uh, simply across the screen there. Okay, and then it disappears and it's gone. I have one car. 
uh, that I've created. Here's what I want. I want three more cars created, and I want them created at these uh, at these addresses. So I'm going to write this down here for you. I want to create one at 700 minus 50. Okay. I want another one created at four at the coordinates 400 minus 150, and I want another one created at the coordinate 600, comma minus 150. Okay. So you create three more cars, add them to the list, and then run it, and you'll see four cars total moving across the screen. Pause the video here. Okay, so I don't want to create cars as the empty list each time. I only want one list of cars, so I don't repeat that line. But I do repeat this line for each of the cars, okay? And I repeat this line for each of the cars that I create. So those are the lines that have to be um, executed over and over again. And this one would have to be at 700 minus 50 then. I'll take those two lines. And actually, before I write any more, I'm going to run it and test it out and see if it works. Okay. So there's two cars moving across the screen, and that seems to work. So I did that because I want to write this incrementally, meaning that I don't want to write a whole bunch of code that's wrong right away. I want to test, write just a little bit and then test it out and see if it works. So there's the next one that I need to do. Pretty confident now that this is going to work. So we're going to do 400 minus 150 on that and append that car. And we'll do one more of those as well um, to get the next one. And this one goes at 600 minus 160, looks like. Actually, it's minus 150. I typed the wrong thing before. This should have been minus 150. OK, so now when I go and run it, I've got four different cars that are moving across the screen, and that's great. But they disappear. And I don't want them to disappear off the screen here completely. I'd like them to wrap around. So it turns out we can do that pretty easily if we want to. We could come up and we could make sure that they wrap around if we write our own forward method. Okay, so race car right now is a frog. So a frog has a forward method, but we can define our own. So we're going to define our own forward with self and the distance that we want to move forward. Okay, and um, and normally we're going to just move it forward using the frog forward code, but we can actually ask where where is this car? So if self dot x core, it's the x coordinate that's going to take us off the screen. And if that ends up at, uh, um, for the race car, if that ends up less than 0 or less than uh, minus 400, actually, less than minus 400, then we've gone off the screen. In that case, we want to do a self dot go to, and we'll go to 400 comma self dot y core to get it to the right spot. Okay. So this has the effect of wrapping it around on the screen if we ever get to that point where it's off the screen. Now we still have to move it forward. So we're going to go to the superclass and call forward on the superclass. And uh, the forward that we're going to go is that distance that we've got there. So we still need that piece of it there to make the race car wrap around. So you might want to pause it at this point and write that code for forward. Once you've done that, you should be able to run this. And the cars will wrap around as they go off the screen so that we continue having cars going across the screen. OK, so that is our lesson this time. Um, we've got that. If we click in the window, we have the ability to move the frog. So the frog can move. And the cars move, and uh, and everything's good at this point. Um, 
So we're going to need to create some logs the next time, and that's going to be the, uh, the subject of our next lesson.